well it's been a bit of a while since I last did a YouTube I've just been too busy to actually film one but I thought I'd just pop out now now the winds slowed down and just do a quick recording for you as you can see the hostas are doing really well and this acer is starting to come out see from the leaves more osters loads of them actually everything's doing quite well and I'm sure it's a lot further on than it was last year but as you know we're having some great weather so although we might have a climate change it's uh, helping some of the plants that's a nice euchre that's just Euchre Zabliana. A very much overlooked Euchre in my opinion. And it has that lovely, I don't know what I'd call that, lovely mahogany colour. Fantastic. Geraniums are doing well as well. In fact, everything's doing pretty well at the moment. Even my Miscanthus grasses are coming up quicker than they normally would. That one there, for instance. This border looks pretty, pretty sparse at the moment. <clears throat> but not for long. Not for long. There's all sorts in there that are going to come up and surprise you. This Sorbus has made a reappearance, and that's Sorbus Kashmiriana. The one that was raised from a seedling that I bought quite some time back actually. This is a nice little ground cover and I don't think I've mentioned this one ever on my videos. It's a senior. Let's have a look which one it is. I can't remember because I've had several of these. Senior. Yeah, there, there we go. Purpurea. In a mist purpurea. And it's a lovely carpeting plant. That bang you've just heard is the pigeons being scared. We have a real pigeon problem at the moment so they've got the the crow scurrers the spire is looking nice it's a little one called plum tastic don't like the name in fact i absolutely hate the name but it's looking quite nice here's a good grass this one's called cecilaria nitida I was hoping to find lots of seedlings around, but as of yet, I found nothing. But it's quite an early cedar, as you can see. Them seed heads should go up further. In fact, I think that's, I still think it's a little bit earlier than it should be. This looks fantastic this year. This is Euphorbia epithemoides. And it's called the pin spurge, or the cushion spurge. And it's really, really nice this year. It'll get taller. I like it at this phase, but it does get a lot taller than that. And it will go above this little box hedge next to it. And it kind of spoils it as it does that. But nevertheless, it's lovely. Oh, I didn't realise this was starting to come out. As I said, everything's coming out early. Very early. This is Ashfodeline lutea, and it's starting to send up its seeds. It's doing quite well. And the box edging is ahead of time this year as well. The fresh new growth is, is everywhere. And I think a lot of it's to do with the rain, the, the vast amount of rain that we've had. You can see the fresh new growth on it all is doing so well. It's a nice view down there now. I love that view. So that's the Telegraph Pole Pergola Walk. Looking absolutely fantastic. At the moment, I'm looking for seedlings in the garden. I've not really gone through it, through the borders properly at the moment. Not really rake through because I'm still trying to protect this shoulder of mine, which I promised I won't mention again, but I will. 
and I'm I'm still looking for seedlings. So this is a euphorbia seedling. It's just a wolfenii type. You can tell it's a wolfenii type from from the red stem there it's got, and it comes through Caracas, and it's wonderful. I love it. This is going to be good this year. This is that what is known as Cortadaria richardii or Ostradaria richardii, both names accepted. Oh, I'm getting a lovely scent at the moment, and I'm getting it from from this. I'm getting it from this. It smells absolutely gorgeous. And this is a Viburnum, a Burkwoodii, and it's the Park Farm Hybrid. But the scent, oh, so delicious. Roses are away, as I said before. I think this one needs feeding. I know it needs feeding, I've not fed it, it's about the only one in the get now, there's two or three I ain't fed actually, but you, you've got to really feed them if you want them to move on. The ones that I've actually fed are way ahead of them. So yeah, I'm getting really excited now because some of the plants that I planted some time ago, a couple of years ago, are getting established now. So I'm looking forward to seeing how they do. That's a Veronica Astrum there, that little one. And then that Euphorbia, Excalibur, the one I always mention at this time of year. Euphorbias, you've got to get Euphorbias. You have to have a Euphorbia in your garden. I'm not talking about the little one. I'm talking about the wolf any eyes. They do offer so much, as you can see from my own Malachi behind that post. They just look wonderful. And then there's this one here. This was just a selected seedling. The seed heads are massive on this one. And then what they do is they go over to that and then what I do is take those right down to the ground and just clip them back and then all the new growth actually comes from underneath as you can see Kamazias are coming up now they're very early they're definitely early then but I'm looking forward to those Sorbuses are doing well this year already out and remember we're halfway up England on the right hand side so we're on the not far from the east coast so we we are a little bit behind compared to some counties I do notice when I'm looking through other people's YouTubes and it's it's always a bit of a surprise actually to to see how far people actually are on with their own plants This has been flowering for some time now. It's it's cracking that. I absolutely love this. Very forget-me-not looking flowers. They're wonderful. They're Brunera's. That one is Alexander's Great, whereas this one here is a seedling from Alexander's Great. So nice one. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, these look, these look great. I just wish I had more of these. This is the shuttlecock fern. And I planted loads at one time, but I kept treading on them because I was doing all that work on the Telegraph Pole Pagola and I had all the stuff here, if you remember. I had bags of gravel, hardcore. So every time I raked it out, I've trod on these. But they hadn't come through properly at that point. I'm a bit, I'm a bit concerned actually because I put this pile of turf here and I can't remember if there's anything at the back there that I might have planted. And it's too late now, isn't it? But these shuttlecock ferns, they do make colonies. So they spread around themselves making making these little colonies. Oh, you can see here's a good example of one. Look, there you go. Look, the little tiny one. And then there's another little tiny one there. And they'll spread all in this area. And that's that's exactly what I want them to do. In fact, I've had to mark this one at the time because it was so small. More osters. I'm not even sure which this one is. I'm a bit annoyed with myself. I've been going round and relabeling a lot of the osters because pigeons pinch my labels. But they've not pinched them all, so I've managed to find some of them. I'll probably have a better idea once they come out. But until then, they will remain a mystery. This is Acuba japonica, Crotonifolia. 
I much prefer this one to the straight variegata. It has a lot more interest in leaf. And as that gets a bit more mature, we should see a lot more of that colour as opposed to that colour. So that colour there should dominate, hopefully. This Acer looks great. It's just that shape. I don't get to see this shape now, remember. Once it's in full leaf, we just don't get to see that shape. But I bought this Acer because of that shape. It's looking brilliant. There's another little one down there. Not as good. It's taking a bit longer, that one. In fact, it, it was looking sickly. But I think I've, I've got it going now. I think it's in the right place. But who can tell? This is this is probably, well, it is by far my favourite ace of this one, and it's all over the place, to be honest, all over the place. And that is because I had it at two different locations, two different gardens, and I had to move it, and I had to clip it according to where it was sat at the time. So it's all over, and I've resisted doing any while I've been here. I've just left it alone. And as you can see, it's now seeding. Those red seed heads. I've tried growing this, but no success as yet. I've tried to get the seeds going. Maybe one day I will I will find some seedlings. This is nice. And this is a small pea, like the sweet peas, but a very small one. And it's tiny, won't get very big, won't take over house and home. But always looks nice. We never saw this last year because, believe it or not, I'd planted it underneath that grass by mistake. I found it in the winter. And that particular one's called Lathrus Vernus. I'll put the name on the screen for you. See what I mean about the miscanthus? They're already up and away. Which is... Okay, that further down south I've noticed there's a lot up, but they're further down south, so they have better weather. There's another one there. I love that one. That's probably my favourite one. So this I'm going to plant out at some point. It's wonderful. It's Thuipoclata whipcord. Remember, in that bucket it used to be on the floating deck. I've put it there so I fall over it to remind me to get it planted. Now, I don't think I've shown this. Well, not this string anyway. This string is a bit of an art form but with the Japanese. And I've done, I've tied this on because this branch was too far in all of this and it was gonna cause a problem. So the Japanese have a, a way of making a knot into an art form. Now, as you can see, my knots are definitely not an art form and then I've tied it and they tie it to rocks but I'm British and I've tied it to this old brick and as I said I'm not I'm not a tire but it's looking good and it's doing the job I mean if I if I did take the tension off that that would go back up and this is another Acer but the David eye types and that one's Viper with the lovely a lovely colour on the bark, the snake bark maple, fantastic. So that's looking good. Now I'm not a big tulip fan, you're probably don't, not aware, but I'm not. I left these for Cathy, she likes tulips, but I thought, well I could live with the red ones, so I left the red ones, took all the yellow ones out, but then I've discovered that we've got some orange ones in, and it's these ones are beautiful, I, I really do like it. Maybe I'm coming over to the dark side, who knows? We may see more and more of those as we go along. It's looking fantastic. It's about the best one in the garden. It's just a self-set seedling, but it's looking great. And then this is doing great. Chinese rhubarb, Rium australe, and then we'll show you the other one in a minute. And this bluebell, I don't know what it is, but it's been a lovely clump since day one. So I decided to keep it. Remember, Bluebells can be very, very, what shall we call it, successful. <laughs> and they will seed everywhere. But that's remained a lovely clump. So when I find the Spanish ones, of which there are, or were many in this garden, I take them out. 
Our china clover looks fantastic. In fact, it's got some orangey tones in it at the minute. I don't know if that's going to come across very well on the camera. It's not actually, but some really orangey tones in it. And it's really, really nice. This one I note is not looking as good this year, which concerns me because it is now probably six years old. Still okay, but I don't think it's helping because where I've put it on that corner, I don't think that's now, helping Now, as I said, I've got a bit of a problem with the pond. As you can see, there's a lot of weed in there. I think some people call that duck weed. I don't know what it is, but it's got to come out. I've got to sort it. The rheum are oh, now, I've just noticed that that rheum palmatum, one of the leaves has been shredded. And that's down to this storm Kathleen that's gone through. Look at that. It's absolutely shredded, that one. But it'll be fine. What I shall do is leave it alone, leave it to protect the ones behind it. And then I'll cut that leaf off. As you can see, there's some brand new ones. The red ones are new ones that are about to pop up and they're all over in there. But I do really like this. This is Rheum palmatum tanguticum. What a wonderful Rheum palmatum. And it is the rhubarb family. And you can you can eat these, but you can only eat it the once. And I think you know what I'm talking about. That's it, once you've ate it. <laughs> so you're not eating it again. So don't eat it. More lovely euphorbias. That's Palustris, Wallenberg's Glory, fantastic. Another Brunera, a seedling. And probably one of the best ones I've found so far. So I've kept that down here. I've, I've moved it from its original position, so I'll keep my eye on it. Yeah, everything's coming on nicely. I don't want to go on too long, but you can see things are coming on. Another month or maybe a month and a half to two months, this, you'll not see the soil, or practically not see the soil there. Another Acer tromp and bog coming up. I love Acers. And I've noticed hydrangeas are a little bit ahead of time at the moment. There you go. Now, we've had to mess about at the minute. I've, I've got this little tin that I've cut up from the main one, and all will be revealed in time what I'm going to do with that. I'll leave you guessing. Here's one of the sheep bale feeders. And that's the Miscanthus lutaria riparius. And I've, if you notice that little bit there, I've been digging out some of it for Ben up at Cliffbank Nursery up in Yorkshire there. He's asked me if I can provide him some more. He's got a lot of people after it now, which is lovely. So he's going to be supplying more of that. Just want to show you this while I'm here. I'm not going to go too much into de into any details with this. I'm not happy with that gate anymore. What is happening is it's now causing me problems. It's a lovely gate. I am going to use it elsewhere, but it is coming off. It has come off already. I've had to lift the hinges there, as you can or the hinge holders, as you can see, where I've moved them. But what's happening is it's pulling the whole structure over because that gate or garden door it weighs quite a quite an amount. So I've decided get him rid, put it in another part of the garden and might screw it against the wall of the building, of the house, just as a point of interest. But what I'm going to do, I have two things I could do with this. One is I could put up the metal gates I've got, the old iron gates, which are only small, but would go against what the idea was. And that was to be more of a secretive place. And then the other idea is I put a garden gate up there, a cheap one. There are cheap ones. If you just look up there to the back there, you can see the one in the background there. I'm going to get another one of those, hopefully, and put that in. Or I could put the the gate, which is there, the iron gate. I could put that in, but I think or I feel that possibly I need to keep this looking secret still so that when you open it, it's more Here's of a another wow. Sorbus. This is Leonard Messel, the one that I found up in the Lake District, or the one that, that Kathy found for me while we was at Larch Cottage Nurseries. Fantastic. This bamboo's doing really well now. 
and this year it is really going to come into its own. I thought last year it would have done a, a little bit better, but it has done well because I've been looking back on some of my videos and I noticed how small it was. It only had about two canes, three canes when I first put it in. It was dinky. You forget how quick it goes. And it is a far GC type. I always talk about this and it will come from its base. You can see there's lots of new, lots of new cones coming up or canes, whatever you want to call them. And they always come from the base, so it stays quite tight. It's just faster than the others, but it's very nice. <clears throat> now, if you're looking for a plant in a in a dry area or under shade, you won't go wrong with this one. This is Telema, Telema grandiflora. And it's not flowering yet, but when it does, it has a lovely, subtle hint of a smell. <clears throat> I can't describe it because I can't remember where, it's, where it is. It's been so long since I've actually been able to smell that one. Here we've got some lungwort, so that's pulmonaria, and it was already in the garden. I found it in, in a tiny little border, one of the only two little tiny borders that were here, and I decided I would keep that, and I'm pleased I did, because it's got a very nice leaf once all that flowering's gone over. And the flowers are really, really nice. The spotting you can see in them leaves will become more prominent once the flowers have gone. So that's looking good. This area is looking nice. Looking very nice, getting established now. There's the tulips. There's a spire to the left, that little orange shrub. I can't remember which one that is. I'm sure the name's there somewhere. That's looking good. So here's the other roses. And as you can see, a lot further on, because I fed these ones. In fact, all of these down here are looking really good. I fed them up. I fed them all. This is another euphorbia seedling. And I've got a, a feeling that it might be that whistleberry garnet and it's a seedling from that. So I may have to lift it and put it into a pot because it's looking very much like one at the moment. In fact, let me go show you whistleberry garnet. I didn't show you it. We went into the nook, but we never had a look at it. And I just want to show you not to be put off it too much apart from its habit of spreading it is a wonderful wonderful euphorbia to get and i would highly recommend it i've got a lot of euphorbias around here don't know why i've just ended up with a lot of euphorbias well let's go in so here we go look at that i just love it honestly i really do rate this one now i rated it before when my friend had hers down in a woodlandy area but remember it's related to robbie eye and it's a cross with martini eye and it's supposed to have the best of both but unfortunately it does have a little bit more of a running habit than i would have liked and i didn't want to find it in the garden or in other borders but here it's going to be absolutely fine and you can see the seed heads this is what they do and what happens is at certain times of year on all euphorbias or most euphorbias, as far as I'm aware, the seeds pop and are carried away then into different areas of the garden by ants. Oh, look at this Areobotria japonicus. That's doing the best I've ever seen it, but it's getting really established now. Now, really, it shouldn't, it shouldn't really like the UK, but they, they are doing better and better because the climate changes that we're having and the warmer conditions we're getting, it's letting it be what it is what really which is an evergreen but all those new leaves doing really well where it comes from in is it china it's a tree but it's only a shrub here this is the devil's walking stick and it's an aralia and it's this one's I can't remember which one it is, but it's more of the angel wing ones. I don't know why they call it the devil. Well, I do know why they call it the devil's walking stick, because of those spines. Can you make those out on there? Those spines all over that stick itself. And weirdly, these grow like this. Single stems. 
and on top a massive massive leaf will appear and again it's still settling in so we need to give it time okay onwards and upwards so yeah everything's doing well I'm very happy with everything things are maturing well now getting more established the hedge is coming back so won't be long before i'm having to clip this back because don't forget i do open the garden from time to time so uh, people need to be able to get past symphytum don't don't dismiss symphytums yes it's a very very spready very successful spreader but it's easy to control And I absolutely love it. This particular one was already here, so I don't actually know its name. But it's wonderful, nevertheless. Hacking the clovers are looking good. They're coming up again. Estrantias, they'll be some of the first ones to flower. And this border again is looking a bit like there's nothing in it in parts, but there is. Don't forget, everything's still settling in, but some of the stuff is still dormant as I'm filming this, but will come up in no time at all. Carl Forster border, Calamagrostis coming up now. The taller ones, as I say every time, is an allium, and the allium is summer drummer. Summer drummer, very nice tall one and you won't believe it well you will for those that watch this or watch my videos on a regular basis will know that this grass will take over and go above above the leaves of the alliums before long and then the stalks will come up with a little pom-pom purple flowers and it'll all look good but there we go again look showing you back back to the euphorbias back to wolfenyes or cariacis you know look they're just wonderful there's two types here that one there is a selected seedling and what i do is if i find seedlings around i don't i don't collect them all because some are very boring and green looking and then some are more on the blue side and look look really nice and you can you can get your eye in at some point in fact while we're talking about one look at that one that's got stuck i thought it had this one here is stuck it's got it's self-wedged on this this ivy there you go that's better but look at that that flower is fantastic and it's great for early pollinators and you've got to remember pollinators come out fairly early in the year and often people don't have enough flowers for them to pollinate and that's their food remember so these look great i've got them all over the place at the moment you can see the flowering already very early again this is lamium ovala and it's a nettle, but it won't sting you like a nettle. And I've got them everywhere in the garden. I'm putting them all over. They will gently self-seed around. Come on, let's take you up to this one. This one's looking good. So that one gets taller. It'll not, oh, look, 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 look. We've just come at the right time. There's a bee on it. So it just proves that these pollinating plants are fantastic for our little, our little buzzy friends. So that's Lamium ovala. Okay, so I, I think I've bored you enough. I know I'll bore you all. And I'm sure some of you just uh, flash through my videos. I do go on a bit, but let's end it with this little bit. And this bit, I just had, what's that one there? That's a Eupatorium, and that's Eupatorium cannabinum. And I had that, and I had that plant there. And um, what's behind that? I'm trying to see what's behind it. Another Kamazia there in that section. I put another grass in there. Um, what have I put there? What have I put there? Hmm, can't remember. Uh, oh, Solidago. Solidago in there. And there's more Kamazias here. And oh, I forgot to name this one. It's a Leucanthemum. It's just a bog standard one. The big white ones that you all see. Looking great. And then we've got the Bressingham Bountiful. That's a Budlia. That's going to be wonderful this year. And then, finally, I managed to get this in. This is a pampas grass, a smaller pampas grass called Evita. And it has a really pretty coloured flower or seed head. A bit like the one I often talk about, a bit like Patagonia. So, yes, everything's away. As you can see, 
things are growing nicely and spring is most definitely most definitely doing its thing so i'll talk to you again on the next one and ta for now